Hey guys, so the potato diet. A few weeks ago, fellow vegan YouTuber High Carb Hannah, she started this 30 day challenge called the potato diet or the potato cleanse, where she eats uh, pretty much all potatoes, uh, that's her calorie source, as many potatoes as she wants for the 30 days, along with uh, non starchy vegetables and fat free condiments. So it's very low fat diet, no uh, oils, I believe no overt fats uh, either. It's just potatoes and non starchy vegetables and uh, like any kind of condiment, again, fat free, like maple syrup or ketchup. That's it. As I said, it is also called the potato cleanse and watching uh, Hannah's videos um, over this challenge period, uh, I haven't heard her talk about any like cleansing effects of potatoes. She mostly just talks about weight loss, but she does use the phrase uh, potato cleanse, which I think is misleading because cleanses are bullshit. Um, I'm not going to go into why potato cleanses and juice cleanses and banana cleanses and master cleanses and all the cleanses and detoxes are bullshit because it's already been done to death. There are so many um, blogs and articles and even videos that have covered it and covered it really, really, really well. Plus this video is long enough as it is. So if you're interested in information on detoxes and cleanses and all that bullshit, you can check out uh, links in the description. So now on to the potato diet itself. So I'm going to go through the original video that Hannah did before she started the challenge explaining what it was and why she's doing it. So I'm going to go through uh, that video and yeah, let's do it. People were requesting, obviously, to do like the no overts challenge, which I'm doing right now. The reason that I'm doing it is just to show people that like you're not going to die if you don't eat any overt fats. And it can actually be very beneficial for you if you are trying to lose weight on a plant-based diet. Besides the fact that avoiding overt fats, fatty plant foods for 30 days is not the same thing as avoiding them for several months, several years, definitely not an entire lifetime. What is the point? Why would you want to encourage people to avoid or even just severely limit overt fats? As I talked about in my uh, recent critique of McDougal's, the fat you eat is the fat you wear. Fatty plant foods like nuts and seeds and avocados are healthy foods and they are an integral part of a well-planned, healthy vegan diet. As far as such a low fat diet being beneficial for weight loss, that could be true. Although the evidence actually doesn't support it. Check out Dr. Greger's uh, video on the topic, link in the description. But fat is more calorically dense than uh, carbs and protein. So eating less avocados, nuts, and seeds could result in weight loss, but who cares? Anyone can lose weight. The trick is keeping it off, is maintaining that weight loss. And the only way you can do that, assuming what helped you lose the weight was eating no overt fats, let's say severely limiting fat intake. The only way you would keep the weight off would be to keep doing that, would be to keep severely limiting or avoiding overt fats, healthy fats like almonds and avocados and chia seeds and walnuts, etc. In that sense, avoiding overt fats to lose weight is really no different than the various weight loss drugs. They will help you lose weight, but the only way you're going to maintain it is if you continue to take the drugs. Taking these drugs isn't healthy and neither is avoiding nutritious and disease fighting plant foods. There was a 1927 experiment where two people went on all potatoes. They did have like a little bit of oil um, because they were losing too much weight and butter at the end. And then they also had some fruits as well. Um, but they lived off potatoes predominantly for six months and they never got sick of potatoes and they were athletes and they got enough protein, they got enough nutrients and they were totally fine with it. And then the other person that did kind of like the all potato experiment was Chris Voigt. 60 days on all potatoes and I think he was eating 20 potatoes a day. He had some incredible results from his experiment. His weight dropped from 197 to 176. His glucose dropped from 104 to 94. His cholesterol went from 214 to 147. Here is a nutrition professor who lived on 1800 calories of Twinkies, Hostess cupcakes, and Doritos and other junk for 10 weeks. He lost 27 pounds and his LDL dropped 20%. Here's a guy who has eaten a refined sugar predominated diet for his entire life, yet he's 5'10 and weighs only 150 pounds. Calories in versus calories out. When a caloric deficit exists, weight will drop and so will LDL, whether the diet is comprised of potatoes or Doritos. In our Raw Till and Ever group, I see a lot of newbies that come in and they're like, I need a cleanse, like I'm gonna go on a 30 day juice fast and they do all these like crazy cleanses and things like this. 
And every time that I see a post like that, I'm like, why don't you just eat potatoes? Or just tell them that cleanses are bullshit. Again, these temporary diets don't cleanse anything and they don't teach people how to eat healthfully and sustainably. Sure, someone may lose weight following a juice cleanse or a potato cleanse, but they won't be able to maintain it because at some point they're going to have to go back to eating a regular healthy diet. If you were to have all of your calories coming from potatoes and you ate 2000 calories a day, you get 50 grams of protein that contain all the amino acids that your body needs. This is partially true. I plugged in 2000 calories each for both boiled potatoes with skin and baked potatoes with skin. And while overall protein was low for me, check out my protein video for more information on that. Uh, in both cases, my amino acids were met. Now, 2000 calories of sweet potatoes, however, uh, this was not adequate for several amino acids uh, when boiled without skin, which is how I eat it. I don't know why people would eat sweet potato skin, it's disgusting. But even when baked uh, with skin, you're still going to lack lysine. And if you watch my last Q&A, you'll know that nine of our amino acids have to come from plants. I don't think this is quite what Hannah uh, meant to say, uh, but I wanted to comment on it anyway, just in case it was confusing people or a little bit misleading. Uh, I think she meant to say that all nine essential amino acids have to come from food and food being plant or animal origin. There's no doubt that we can meet protein needs, essential amino acid needs from animal products. It's basically the only thing that animal products have going for them nutrition wise uh, if you look at again potatoes what you can get amino acid wise what you what you can get from 2000 calories of potatoes you can get in just 300 calories of chicken breast i think her ultimate point was that we don't need animal products to meet our protein needs which is absolutely true uh, plant proteins like legumes are actually preferred not only for their protein but also for the other things that they give us like fiber and antioxidants as well as the things that they don't like cholesterol 2% of your calories would come from fat. I assume that Hannah means this as a selling point, just given the name of her channel, as well as how she's talked about uh, fat just earlier on in the video, but it really isn't. Again, fatty plant foods are healthy and there's no evidence that we need to eat so little fat or even that it's healthy to eat so little fat. Uh, for instance, we need dietary fat for vitamin A absorption. What matters is the type of fat. Saturated and trans fats are bad, whereas poly and monounsaturated fats are good. Uh, this is made clear by the evidence on heart disease. When saturated fat is replaced with polyunsaturated fat, heart disease risk decreases. Again, for more information on this, check out my video on the fat you eat is the fat you wear. And you get well over the RDA of the following nutrients. So you get enough vitamin C, copper, iron, magnesium, manganese, niacin, phosphorus, potassium, thiamine, and zinc. This is correct. Aside from the last nutrient that is mentioned, 2000 calories of potatoes does not provide enough zinc for even an adult female. Uh, it does not meet the RDA for an adult female. And this does not take into account that vegans may need as much as 50% more than the RDA. Also not taken into account is all of the other vitamins and minerals and some fatty acids that potatoes fall short in. 2000 calories of potatoes is deficient in riboflavin, vitamins A, C, and K, calcium, selenium, and omega-3 fatty acids, three of which, vitamin A, K, and calcium, are important for bone health. Although apparently calcium isn't a concern. Your calcium intake would be 200 milligrams, which is low, but your diet will have a super positive alkaline balance, so you won't be losing any nutrients from the calcium that you're absorbing. I talked about this a while ago in my response to Fully Raw Christina's video on why milk is bad for you. This idea that acid forming foods like animal products, uh, they're actually terrible calcium sources, including milk, because they force our body to leach calcium from our bones to neutralize the acid. Further research has shown that this just isn't true. An intrepid group of researchers tried feeding a bunch of volunteers radioactive calcium and then putting them on a high-protein diet. What happens when you put people on a high-protein diet? The amount of calcium in their urine shoots up. And indeed, that's just what happened. But here's the big question. Was that extra calcium in their urine radioactive or not? And to everyone's surprise, it was radioactive meaning that the excess calcium in the urine was coming from their diet. Uh, remember, they're feeding them radioactive calcium. So the excess calcium in their urine wasn't coming from their bones, but from what they were eating. What seemed to be happening is that the excess protein consumption boosted 
calcium absorption from down around 19% up to 26%. So all of a sudden there was all this extra calcium in the blood, so presumably the kidneys are like, whoa, what are we going to do with it all? So they dump it in the urine. 90% of the extra calcium in the urine after eating a steak doesn't appear to be coming from our bones, but from our diet. This was repeated with even more extreme diets, an acid-forming five burgers a day worth of animal protein diet that limited fruit and vegetables, versus an alkaline diet emphasizing fruits and vegetables. More calcium in the urine on burgers, but significantly greater calcium absorption, such that at the end it was pretty much a wash. So what about Hannah's claim that eating alkaline vegan foods like potatoes means that vegans need less calcium? The one study on Western vegans measuring fracture rates over time found that vegans in the group who got less than 525 mg of calcium per day had a higher fracture rate than vegans in the group getting more than 525 mg. The vegans in the lower calcium group also had higher fracture rates than the meat eaters and lacto-ovo vegetarians. And 525 mg is substantially more than what a potato diet offers. There's also bioavailability to worry about, while low oxalate foods like uh, kale and broccoli have high absorption rates. High oxalate and phytate foods like spinach and beans have much lower rates. Calcium bioavailability from sweet potatoes is not as poor as spinach, but not as high as kale either. In other words, there is no evidence to suggest that a potato diet meets calcium needs, and plenty of evidence to suggest that it doesn't. Also, potatoes have an incredibly high satisfaction factor. I find beans and wheat incredibly satisfying, and it's one of the reasons why they are my main calorie source. I could live on the seitan hummus pickle wheat bread sandwich that I've been making lately. I could live on that thing, and it is incredibly healthy, but even still it doesn't provide everything that I need. So I make sure to include other things in my diet, other foods, uh, like broccoli for vitamins A and K, uh, avocado for B vitamins and potassium, walnuts for omega-3s, etc. You're getting enough calories, you're filling yourself, you're not starving yourself, it's not like you're juice fasting or doing something crazy. Hannah clearly hates juice cleanses as much as I do, and that's great, but are they really so different from a potato cleanse? A difference in degree, perhaps, but not kind. Yes, eating a diet of predominantly potatoes for 30 days is better than, say, a banana diet, since potatoes are more nutritious than bananas, but it's still clearly an inadequate way to eat. Juice cleanse, banana cleanse, potato cleanse, they're all unhealthy. It sounds like a fad diet, but I think if people were doing a potato diet instead of a juice fast, or they wanted to just do something really simple, like an elimination diet to you know, clear their acne or clear some type of a problem, and then start adding in you know, rice and adding in beans and adding in all these other things and figuring out what is causing the problems that they're having, I think the potato diet would be perfect. This is not how elimination diets work. If your doctor recommends this for a suspected food allergy, he or she is not going to put you on a potato and ketchup only diet. They are going to have you cut out the specific food that they think is causing the issue and see if your symptoms go away, and then have you reintroduce the food to see if they come back. Part of this process entails replacing whatever food is being eliminated with another food or foods that still meet nutrient needs. So if you are eliminating wheat and that was a food that gave you uh, a lot of protein, it was your predominant protein source, then you are going to want to eat, say, more beans and nuts to make sure you are still eating protein needs. A potato diet is not helpful here since it is not only incomplete nutrition-wise, but unnecessarily restrictive. So I just want to be like clear that no food is complete enough to be eating for you know a very very long period of time but potatoes are pretty much the most ideal food to be doing that with because they have so many nutrients so much of what your body needs every single day and you're not going to be depriving yourself of any like anything that's super necessary that you need to get every single day or anything like that. While it's true that we don't need to meet every single nutrient need every single day, Hannah isn't talking about eating potatoes for one day. She's talking about eating potatoes, and almost exclusively potatoes based on her vlogs, for 30 days. 30 days of too little zinc and selenium, 30 days of significantly inadequate calcium, 30 days of virtually no vitamin A. More importantly, who is she talking to? Who is her audience? 
based on her channel name, the content of her videos, the comments on her videos, it's people who uh, eat or are trying to eat a high carb, low fat vegan diet. It's people who probably believe that calcium is not a concern as long as you are eating an alkaline vegan diet. It's people who probably believe that it is impossible not to meet protein needs as long as you're getting enough calories. It's people who probably believe that nutrient density, micronutrients in general, and bioavailability of these nutrients, this isn't a concern. Just carb up and limit your fat intake and you'll be fine. In other words, Hannah is promoting a nutrient deficient, unnecessarily restrictive diet to people who already follow a nutrient deficient, unnecessarily restrictive diet. Most of us don't eat 100% healthy 100% of the time. Uh, we sometimes eat too much junk. We don't meet all of the key nutrients that we need uh, often. <laughs> and this is for all of us, vegans, vegetarians, and omnivores. The only way to rectify this is to focus on eating a well-planned vegan diet year round, one that is nutritious and delicious and satisfying, and to try to do this year round. While potatoes can certainly play a role in such a diet, they can't make up the bulk of one's diet. Or can they? As I stated in the beginning of the video, Hannah's potatoes diet is not just potatoes, it's also non-starchy vegetables as well. Unfortunately, after looking through many of her uh, vlogs where she shows what she eats, the amount of vegetables she's actually eating is like virtually nothing. Here's an example where you can clearly see that it's almost all potatoes. And here's another one. And another one. So I decided to do my best to create a potato diet that is actually nutritionally complete following the rules of the potato diet. So potatoes being the main calorie source, uh, inclusion of non-starchy vegetables, and no added oils. I did include some nuts for omega-3s and zinc, but I did still keep the overall fat intake low at just about 13%. So here it is, 1500 calories from just regular white potatoes, uh, so three-fourths of the 2000 calories, 12 ounces of cooked broccoli, and six ounces of cooked kale, that's for vitamins A, E, K, as well as calcium, 1.25, so one and a quarter ounce of pumpkin seeds, that's for zinc, one tablespoon ground flax for omega-3s, one Brazil nut for selenium, one cup of fortified almond milk for calcium, one tablespoon of miso for zinc, and half of a teaspoon of salt for salt. I mean, you have to make it taste good somehow. <laughs> you could add other herbs and stuff too. I think that's okay on the potato diet. I assume that's okay. So 1,999 calories that meet and even exceed all of the RDA uh, requirements for all of the different nutrients, uh, aside from B12 and D, of course. So this is quite a healthy diet that is based on potatoes. A lot of your calories are coming from potatoes. Um, not all you can eat potatoes, obviously, so that is a little bit of a caveat there, but still a huge amount of potatoes. And you will have to eat a lot of veggies, uh, what, 12 ounces of cooked broccoli, six ounces of kale to make up for all of the nutrients like vitamin A that the potatoes lack. But I mean, honestly, I don't think that's that bad. I really love like steamed kale and broccoli. I could easily eat that much in a day if I had like unlimited income. But as I asked earlier in the video with regard to no overt fats, the no overt fat challenge, what is the point? Why would you want to limit yourself in terms of your main calorie source to only potatoes? There's no reason to do this. Hannah says that her reason for doing this challenge is to spread the word about the mighty potato. But what she's really doing is spreading bad dietary advice. The diet she is advocating for, even for 30 days, it's still nutritionally incomplete and unhealthy. And she is promoting it to people who probably already eat a diet that is nutritionally incomplete and unhealthy. I got in touch with someone today. She was explaining that she's burnt out on the Freely diet. It doesn't work, it doesn't make sense to their lifestyle. She's gaining weight out of control. She's very unhappy about it. And she's giving up veganism entirely and going back to eating meat, even though she believes veganism is morally right, is ethically right, and it's a decision she wanted to keep for the rest of her life. She wanted to be vegan until the day she died. And she gave up because Freely's diet didn't work for her and it was ruining her life. Okay? It's real. 
I know I talk about this a lot, but that's because it's really important. What we eat as vegans is not only important for our health, but for our ethics. When we eat an unhealthy, nutritionally incomplete diet, whether it's beer and potato chips or bananas and dates, we put our ability to stay vegan in jeopardy. Eating an inadequate potato diet for 30 days is doing just that. Unless you are diligent about following it up with a diet that meets all your nutritional needs and is actually making up for the nutrients that you missed eating the potato diet. But come on, no one's doing that. To wrap up, please stay away from the 30-day potato diet, potato cleanse, whatever, as Hannah has presented it. Uh, yes, it's vegan. Yes, it is whole foods based. But as I've already talked about, check out this video. Uh, neither of these guarantee that the diet is actually healthy. The potato diet is the perfect example of this. It does not come close to meeting nutrient needs. Even if you ate 10,000 calories of potatoes, it still would not come close. So instead, how about we eat a well-planned vegan diet that meets all of our nutrient needs, not just some or most of them? Uh, I have a video on vegan nutrition here you can check out. And as always, please be sure to check out registered dietitians Ginny Messina and Jack Norris. They have awesome websites with so much useful information, theveganrd.com and vegan health.org. That's it guys, my camera's about to die. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. And if you want to support me, you can do so at patreon.com slash unnatural vegan. Thanks, bye. I think it's still going. Okay, um